this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I just wanted to bring you a quick patriotic page today. Um, so I pulled out some of my um, more recent uh, patriotic papers. These are from the Stars and Spirit collection that came out from Creative Memories this year. Um, and I also pulled out some embellishments that I punched a while ago and had kind of saved. These are the firecracker punch um, that CM came out with a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly, but um, it's it's a really fun punch to do patriotic stuff with or even use them like as candles on a birthday cake or something like that. Anyway, so we're going to do some fun things with those eventually when we have our layout ready for embellishing. So I'm just going to scoot those puppies right over there. Um, and we're going to see what we can come up with. Now the CM blog has a cute 4th of July page that they came up with, with, um, some fireworks that actually have photos set into them. So that's my goal is to kind of go off of that spread for today's theme, although I don't have all the same papers, so it's not going to look exactly the same, um, but I should be able to get it close. I do need a navy blue piece of cardstock for my base because I don't have any more of this cute blue plaid, which is what they used as the base in the, um, in the spread that's on the blog. Um, I'm going to use this red that's on top, so that's why I can't use this paper for the blue that's on the bottom. Anyways, so a couple things that this layout does include are um, teaching how to kind of void your paper. And what I mean by that is when you, um, when you stack your papers for frames and things like that, it's a lot of weight in your album and I I know that some people get irritated by people talking about you know adding a lot of weight but if if I'm already building this on a piece of cardstock and then I'm gonna add this full sheet and another full sheet on top of that and another full sheet on top of that that is a lot of paper and that page is gonna weigh a lot and if I have 40 pages that all weigh that much that album is not going to get looked at very often. So that's the reason that um, we talk about weight so much and trying to lighten up your page. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll start with this one. And this is going to be our outside frame that will go around the edge. Um, and we want this to be 11 by 11 square. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and cut an inch off this way. Set that aside because we won't need it. I'm going to turn my paper horizontally and I'm going to cut another inch off to make it 11 inches square. And that's so that I have a half an inch all the way around my paper. All right, and it's going to be a frame. So now what I want to do is I want to create that, that frame and I'm going to do that um, there's a couple of different ways I can do that. My frame doesn't need to be very wide because I'm going to actually have another piece of paper on top. So I'm just trying to kind of lighten up my page by pulling the center out of this paper and you being able to use it for something else. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a one inch frame to, um, to lighten this up. And I'm going to start my cut right here at the one inch line, which is right here at the beginning of the grid. And then I'm going to slide my blade down until the white line on the side of my blade housing is one inch from the bottom of my paper. So right here at the 10 inch mark is where I'm going to stop cutting. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip my arm up, turn this one time so that I can line it back up here again at one inch. And do that again. Slide down to the 10 inch line, lift up, turn it, 
And I'm not really concerned about overcuts in this particular process because no one's going to see it. It's going to be underneath, like I said, another page that's going to be on top. So I, I'm not um, as worried about being as super precise. Nobody's going to see it. No, one's, no one will know but me. So... Take that little stress off yourself and just don't worry about it. All right, one more cut and we should have our voided frame. All right, here we go. So now we can use this red square. Oh, hello. I'm a little bit attached. Get off. Okay. Um, so I can use this square for another project. Set that aside. And this frame then will go on to our base, like so. Now what I want is a piece of this to go on top of that frame. And I want it to be just a little bit um, narrow so I have that, I have a red edge that goes around this piece and separates it from the navy blue so I'm going to, if I cut just one inch off, then it will be the same size as my red square, which I don't want. So I want it to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut another, let's see, I want a quarter inch. Let's do a quarter inch all the way around. So I'm gonna cut an inch and a half. I'm gonna cut an inch and a half off this side. I'm gonna turn this and cut an inch and a half off this side. So we have a square. All right, and then it will fit right in the center of that red square, just like that. And we've lightened it up at least a little bit by taking that big center of the red square out. All right, so there's that. Then what we need is our firecrackers for our photos. So most photos are gonna be four by six. The photos in this sample on the blog look like they are probably four by three or four by three and a half. And there's two of them on each of the, each of the two firecrackers. So, if they are three and a half, that would make seven inches high, plus the half inch in the center for a little bit of journaling. So that's seven and a half, plus a little bit of an edge around the outside. So that would be eight. So let's, let's cut, let's see how this works. We're gonna cut some eight inch, an eight inch triangle, eight, by four and a half. So let's do four and a half first, because that's really easy. Almost don't even need your arm. So there's four and a half. We're gonna turn this sideways and we're going to cut this at eight inches. And I am not following the instructions on the blog, so if you are, or if you have, if you're a subscriber to the blog, by all means, you're welcome to look those instructions up and follow those instructions. I just thought it would be fun to, to walk you through my thought process and how I um, would go ahead and create this if I did not have instructions. Okay, so my trimmed piece here is almost four and a half inches. This is just a, a scrap from another project. So I'm just gonna trim this up so that it is four and a half. And then we need it to be eight inches this way. Oop, mine's a little bit shy of eight inches, but that's okay, I think we'll, we'll make it work anyway. All right, then what we need is a, we need two triangles out of this material. And the triangle is gonna to need to be four inches on the long side, and then meet in the middle at probably a 45 degree angle. So let's see here. If we 
We know this is going to be our base right here. So let's see what we get when we cut this extra piece at a 45 degree angle. Pretty cool. All right, let's turn it. And we're gonna, going to, uh oh, all right, let's see. Now I'm confused. Which one did I cut? Which one did I not cut? That one's four and a half. So that's, so this is our base. So I need to cut this angle right here, which means that I need it to go like this. So flip it over and put the alternate corner on your cutting line because this is our base up here. And we're going to cut that off and then that gives us a four and a half inch at the base triangle, which will be the top of our firecracker. Ta-da! Okay, so we need to do the same thing with the red. Let's see, this piece should work. So let's measure this and make sure that it's four and a half inches. Oop, again, it's a little short, but then so was our other piece, right? So this will probably be just fine because it will match. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this corner on my cutting line and make this edge, which is my baseline, match up to that 45 degree angle that is on my trimmer. Hold on. All right, there we go. And we're gonna cut that. We're gonna flip it over and turn it one degree. So the base is again on the 45 degree angle line. And then just cut that other angle off. All right, so then this should be as wide as our other one. That'll work. Okay, so we've got our two, those, we've got those two. All right, now I'm going to borrow, again, a triangle from um, each of these colors so that we can make some base triangles. And these are going to be about one inch square. So I want a one inch square, and then we're going to cut the triangle, the one inch square, we're gonna cut into a triangle. One inch, is that, am I sure I want one inch? Let's, let's try one and a quarter. It looks a little bit better. So we're gonna do one and a quarter. One and a quarter, one and a quarter. Tiny. Nails are getting in the way, okay. All right, so there, is my square and now I'm gonna cut this into a triangle carefully. Okay, there we go. Two triangles, I mean. Okay, so those are our base triangles for our firecracker, just like so. All right, now what I need I need the same thing from this one. So I'm gonna use this smaller one so I'm not wrecking a really nice larger piece of paper. Okay. There's one inch. Here's another. Oh, I did that too small. Duh. Okay, let's try it again. We need one and a quarter, remember? I obviously forgot. Ooh, this is gonna to be too small now. Well, okay then, let's start again. So one and a quarter, because we want it to match our other one. One and a quarter, and I'm actually gonna use this smaller piece. Okay. One and a quarter and one and a quarter square. Oof. 
tiny bits of paper. Okay. And then we need this one cut into a triangle, two, two, in, into two triangles. There we go. And then the last piece that we need right now is a base piece for, um, for our firecracker. So essentially, if you're looking at the, one of the small firecrackers, it's this piece right here. That we need to build so let's figure out how wide that needs to be if our firecrackers are four and a half inches wide right and we've got our one and a half one and a quarter and one and a quarter inch fins at the bottom And that leaves us approximately two inches to build our stem. So we're going to cut two inches. Uh, we're going to cut stems that are two inches wide. And so, you know what? I'm just going to cut this strip into a two inch strip. And then we're going to cut this. They go off, they go right off the paper at an angle. So just to be safe that I make sure I have enough, I'm going to go ahead and cut these into four inch pieces and then we will trim them later. So four inch pieces. All right, so I need just those two. Okay, so let me just set aside a couple of my extra pieces and we'll get this out of the way. And now we can go ahead and adhere all of our cut pieces onto our base. So first off, we're going to adhere the, just for kicks and giggles, let's see what it looks like with this on the bottom, just to see if we like it. Since, we have, since I'm dealing with a little bit different papers here, could do that or we could do that I like the red better because because I'm a pro red person actually not necessarily like in the political sense red's just one of my favorite colors so here we go we're going to adhere this on. Okay. using my big old adhesive thing. I probably should set that aside because that is not what I normally use when I do my videos. Makes it hard for y'all to see what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got, oh dear. I got my adhesive a little bit close to my edge over here. That's okay, we'll fix it. There we go. All right, now we're gonna do the base. Find my, here it is, other adhesive. Fourth of July is so fun. I really have a good time on the 4th of July, but that could, possibly be accounted back to the fact that my birthday is in July, so it's a fun month for me. Super fun. All right. In fact, when I was little, I used to joke with my friends and tell them that all the fireworks were just for me. 
<laughs> the whole country celebrated. Not that I'm that conceited, because I'm far from that, or at least I hope I'm far from that. Anyways, all right. So let's see. We can overlap these a little bit, but that means our photos are going to be overlapped. Or we can separate them completely, which, I don't know, I kind of like it when they are at least touching at the bottom here. So I think I will probably go with something, something along the lines of that. But let's see, We're, we need to put our caps on our... fireworks so that we can make sure that they fit and there is one piece that I just remembered I did not cut so we're going to need to go back and and cut the separator for journaling that will need to go across but nonetheless we're good okay so I think I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit let's scoot this one Maybe just put them a little, at a little bit more of an angle to give me just a little bit more space. Like that. And you'll notice that mine, mine is not exactly following the sample. Be, and um, So when you look at the sample, you'll realize that I've put mine in the opposite order, but that's okay. It will still work this way. all in what you like, how you want to put it together. Okay, so by putting these on here, I've kind of marked my spot so that I can make sure that I'm, when I take one of them up to go ahead and adhere it, I have something there to know to where to put it back. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. All right, I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive on my tips of my triangles and leave just enough room between the triangle and the base of the firecracker so that you have a little definition there. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and do this one. do the triangle I like to make sure that I have adhesive on the points when I do a triangle because that way you can ensure that the tip of the triangle stays down doesn't accidentally get folded in you which direction especially when you go to put your page protectors on all right, now we're going to go ahead and put our stems on. And again, these are going to go ahead and just be centered and kind of go off your page and then we'll trim them up in just a little bit. You can see four inches was plenty. It goes right off the page, so you probably don't even need four inches. Maybe three inches would be more than enough. For the measurements that I used. So just centering that on and tucking it underneath the paper, centering it, sticking it down. Now we'll do our fins. This one's going to be a little tricky. I need my all-purpose tool to get that corner back up because I need to get this fin underneath here. Ah, no, don't get stuck down. It's stuck down. Okay, here we go. I'm leaving just a breath of space between the fin 
and my photo and the the base whoops as I look at the picture I'm realizing I did that totally wrong it's supposed to go this way good grief guys okay there we go that's much better all right This one over here will go just like so. Cute. This one over here will just overlap right on top of the red one. Oh dear. Did you see what I just did? <laughs> Thank goodness repositionable adhesive can just rub right off, right? Because I just put that adhesive on the wrong side of my paper. I must be distracted today or something. All right. Let's put it on the right side of the paper, Kimberly. Okay, here we go. And this one will go right like so. All right, cool beans. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and trim off these papers. Now you can trim them off using your scissors if you're confident in your cutting, or you can just use your 12 inch trimmer and just line it up right here like this and cut those right off. Then you have no worries about it being accurate. Okay, we need to, again, create those separators right here for the pictures. So I'm gonna need a, just looking at my scraps just to see if any of them will work for doing that, but I'm not seeing any scraps right off that I could use easily. Actually, I have a bit of gold right here, but that doesn't really match because I have white on the background here. So let's try I think I'm going to need to just cut a piece from a 12 inch piece of paper. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. One second. I have all of this white scrap paper. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so this is actually a piece of our white shimmer paper, which is fun. And I accounted for a half an inch on each one of these for journaling in between the photos. So we're going to cut two pieces that are half an inch. Then we're going to take those pieces and we're going to cut them at four and a half inches because that's how wide our frame is. So four and a half inches. All right, Here's just a little extra pieces. Okay. Now I'm gonna use my repositionable adhesive just because in case I get this crooked, I wanna be able to easily just lift it up and move it. And I'm gonna use my zero centering ruler so that I can find the middle of my pieces here and make it straight. So again, this red piece, you'll remember, was a little bit shy. It was about an eighth of an inch shy. So I'm just centering my ruler on here so that I can center my journal box. That way there will be an even number of or an even amount of space on either side of my, uh, my journaling area so I can put photos right here. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Let me grab my piece I'm trying to adhere down. And we're going to go and we're gonna center. Use our centering ruler. 
So each end of this large rectangle is at a four, the line up for the four. And then that way I know the zero line is the center. So I can go ahead and put my center piece right on top of that zeroing line and I have that divided exactly in half. Okay, so that my photos will go ahead and go on either side of there. Now, the photos are going to be kind of a different size than what we're used to. So let me just cut a couple of templates so that we have the right size, right? So we have, excuse me, this, this is four and a half inches wide this way. So our photos, we said we're going to be four inches wide. So our template's going to be four inches wide. And then this side is one, two, three, and three quarters. So three and a half or three and three eighths. It's going to be our size of our photo that will look nice there. So let's go with three. Let's go with three and a half and see what that looks like. Three and a half would work. It's not going to be completely symmetrical all the way around, but it will be close. I think I'm okay with three and a half because that gives me a little bit more of a border and I still have plenty of photo. So, so three and a half, three and a half by four. Let's see if, let's see if the three and a half still works on our red. Yeah, I think it does. So let me just cut, we'll cut one more out of this so that you can see where the photos would go and their size. And then we'll talk embellishments. Okay, so three and a half. All right. And then let me grab a pencil or pen. Let's use a pen so you can see it better. So these are three and a half high by four wide. Three and a half high by four wide. And there are our photos. Okay, so we do need to add just a couple of embellishments. So let's see what kind of clusters we can make from the sticker pack that goes with this, with these papers so that the colors all match and everything. We have these beautiful wavy flag stickers, which are cool but I don't think I really want to use those on this page. But we could use some of these. We could use some of these. We've got, let's see. United States of America. You're my little firecracker. Oh, that's cute. Let's use that one for one of them. We could stick that right up here, maybe. I'm going to need some foam squares for this. And I need to just see if I can get a little. I always just stick them on my pants just to give a little bit of. Take a little bit of the stickiness away. And then just sticking some foam squares on here so we can play with this a little bit. So. Maybe down here, you're my little firecracker. I like that. You can add some stars to that, maybe, or something. And what else do we want to put? 
on here. We could swing this banner of America the Beautiful right between. Or we've got Freedom Fireworks. I like that. Freedom Fireworks. I'm going to stick those kind of together just a little bit. Especially since their colors are so complementary that we can put a sticky on there. A foam, big old foam square in the center. Ah! I'm telling you, they really like my, my fingernails. Okay. There's one. I'll stick one out here. And another one out here. Really happy that in the latest secret box um, that just came out at the beginning of June, CM gave us all these alternate uh, measured foam squares. You can't buy them that way, unfortunately, on the regular basis, but I'm hopeful that maybe they might come out with that eventually. That would be really awesome if they did that. All right, so we've got one at the top, one at the in, at the bottom. We should put something in the middle, and then we need to add just a little bit to those other other um, words. Okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use actually some of my cut fireworks here because I think they're cool cut out of this really shiny paper. This is not CM paper, so um, I'm not going to let these touch my photos. I have these which are CM paper. They are um, shimmer paper, but the shiny foily paper is not is not uh, CM paper, so I'm not going to let that touch my photos at all. But the rest of this is okay to touch my photos. If I just create a kind of a bunch of those and maybe set them right here in the middle, I think that would be really cute. So let me just go ahead. I'm going to adhere a bunch of those together. Ooh, I'm moving my pictures around. Okay, there we go. I'm going to... Just kind of. I'm putting my adhesive on the back of these because um, I don't know exactly how they're going to bunch together, but definitely leaving some room for interpretation, I guess you could say. And let's see, we're going to I'm going to see if I can put just a little tiny. So I, I cut my foam square in half and that enabled me to make it really, really tiny. You can do that and then um, add them. Add tiny little bits of foam square to bits that um, you don't want to see. You don't want to see the foam squares on, but they're too narrow for a conventional foam square to fit. So we've got those. I think that ought to be fine. Let me just take off. little sticky thingies. There we go, like that. Let me just stick this guy kind of in the middle, like so. I'm going to grab another one of these darker ones. 
gonna put him underneath on this side. Like that. Maybe a dark yellow one behind, mostly because this white one back here fades into, will fade into the background if we don't have something to kind of bring attention to it. So we'll just kind of stick that like so. Maybe move this one so it's more like, more like that. And then we can put that right in the center. And go ahead and add some more adhesive to the back. We can glue that in right there. Right, then we can use some more of these little guys underneath our bigger stuff. Let's see. I'm gonna take it off my sticky from the back of this one. I don't want this to block my photo, especially since I don't know which photo is gonna go on here yet so i'm just going to kind of place a couple of these heading off the page like that let me grab another one just for stability just for the center here and I'm going to put just a little bit of adhesive on the top of those guys because I kind of stuck it to my phone square instead of on the firecracker. All right, and we're going to go ahead and put, make sure we're not attaching this to a photo or where the photo is going to go because my photo is not there yet. So I want to be able to remove that. All right, and then we have this one up here that we need some firecrackers for so let's see I really like these red ones so we're gonna do red white and maybe the blue one or another yellow one I think probably a dark yellow would be good because the rest of these are I don't have any more of that sparkly yellow so We are almost done, guys. Almost done. So fun. Fourth of July. So fun. So we got one, two, and and three. But I covered up all my adhesive. So give me a second. I need something to stick it to. There we go. Just like so. All right. So we'll make sure that we have adhesive on the back here now. take my little cover off of this other um, foam square and we'll add this guy up here where he can't get into trouble okay still can move that all right I believe we are done I think that turned out pretty cool and despite the fact that we don't have any gold in our layout specifically I know there will be gold in these fireworks because there always are in the photos that go on these pages so that will work nicely I hope you had fun doing this blog this rendition of the CM blog post for the 4th of July and um, I hope that you'll use it in your albums and enjoy putting your photos adding your photos to it and 
In the meantime, it's been my pleasure to share this time with you, and I hope that you will keep having more and more creative moments. Have a great day.